In this video, let's take a look at the differences between Q and Q. These words have super different spellings, right? But they have extremely different meanings and uses, more than you might think. So let's get into it. First, let's begin by talking about the word Q, C-U-E. I want to start by talking about this word as a verb. To Q means to signal to do something or to signal to start something. The key here is to signal. So you're giving someone a sign, like waving frantically at them, or maybe you're going like this, making some kind of motion at them. You are giving someone a signal to do something or usually to start something. Here are some examples. Cue the orchestra, it's time to start the show. Someone in the office started gossiping. Cue an entrance by my dramatic coworker who loves these kinds of things. So in these two example sentences, there's some kind of signal that starts another action. In the first sentence, it's cue the orchestra, which means signal to the orchestra that it's time to begin. In the second example sentence, there's some other kind of signal that indicates to another person they should do something. In this case, the signal is some kind of gossip conversation, and this other person, the dramatic coworker, hears that and goes, okay, I'm gonna join the conversation. So a signal can be different things depending on the context, depending on the type of person. This leads us into the noun form of of Q, C, U, E, which means a signal. As a noun, Q means a signal to do something or to start something. Here are some examples. This is your first Q to like this video. See what I did there? Huh? That's my Q, gotta go. When you get a cue from me, close the curtain. So as you can see in these example sentences, we have some kind of signal that tells someone else to do something or to start something. Hello, editor Alicia here. I wasn't gonna include this in the main video, but I just had to because this is super interesting. Have you ever wondered why it's called a pool cue? Because I just wondered and I found out. So the game of pool used to be played with something called a mace, which was kind of this bulky looking thing on a stick that they used to try to hit the ball into the pocket. But when the ball got close to the edge of the table, it got really hard to use the mace. So some players would flip it around to the end and use the other end to hit the ball. And that other end was called a Q, but this used the Q-U-E-U-E -U -E -U -E spelling. And tail was the meaning of that part at the time. So tail was another use. It's still like a less primary use of this Q today. But they used this to hit the ball. And then over time, as people began to use that more and more, they started calling it a Q with the C-U-E spelling. I'm guessing they made that spelling change to differentiate between the tail meaning and the equipment meaning. But that's how that Q, the pool cue came to be. So that got me thinking, okay, so then how do we come up with the signal cue spelling, the C-U-E for signal? And this has a totally different history. So this comes from productions, like theatrical productions, plays and that kind of thing. So when they needed to show a point in the script where something needed to happen, like the music was supposed to start or the curtain was supposed to fall or whatever, they marked it with a Q, like the letter Q. And according to both Merriam-Webster and according to Etymology Online, the leading theory here is that this Q represented the Latin quando, which means when. So this was like a marker point for when this thing happens, something else is supposed to happen. But when they needed to talk about this Q, this letter Q in meetings about the production, they had to have some way to refer to it. So they started spelling it out with C-U-E. Super interesting, right? So I thought that was a super cool bit of history. Anyway, back to the video. So with Q-U-E-Q -E out of the way, now let's shift our focus to Q-U-E-U-E, -U -E, this weird spelling, it looks like Kwewe. Let's look at Q. The first thing that I wanna note about this Q is that it's much more commonly used in British English than in American English, but we do still use it from time to time. Let's start by looking at the noun form of this word. A Q means a line of people. So people that are waiting for something is called a Q. In American English, we say a line, you might hear Q from time to time. Here are some examples. Oh, I should try and do this with a British accent. The queue for the donut shop was an hour long. I'm gonna get roasted by British English speakers. There's almost no queue for movie tickets. Let's get ours now. So the noun form of Q means a line of people. You can probably guess then what the verb form is. The verb form is to stand in line or to go and stand in line. So to Q for something means to join the line or to be standing in the line. We can also use it in the progressive form. So here are some examples of this. Ugh, I hate queuing for long periods of time. Where are we supposed to queue? One other note that I want to include here is that we have the phrasal verb queue up. And there's been a little bit of debate about which spelling of queue should be used for this expression. To queue something up means to prepare something to start. So we usually use this with like videos, tapes, something kind of like media related. So when we want to like play a movie, maybe it's even on Netflix, we might say queue up the movie or queue up that song or whatever it is. So when we ask someone to queue something up to mean to get ready, to get that thing ready to play or to watch, the accepted spelling 
And for that is the C-U-E spelling, not the Kweiwei spelling. So that's one interesting note to keep in mind. Great, so now you know the differences between Q and Q, and you're prepared to use them, whether you're trying to signal someone to do something or just standing in line. So in exchange for this incredible life-changing content, you can hit the like button and subscribe to this channel for more quick hits of information like this that will make you a better communicator, both online and offline. If you like this video, here's another one that you might enjoy. See you next time. There's almost no queue for the movie tickets. Let's get ours. Come at me, British English speakers. I'm sure that was awful. Q, Q, Q. Q, Q, Q. Q, Q, Q. Okay.